1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. According to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. And he's talking not that he's physically building a building here, but spiritually. He's saying, I was teaching you guys the foundations of faith. i got to be careful how I do it. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, if you're going to have faith in God, according to the Bible, the way that God has provided to, for us to access Him, to have access to God the Father, is through Jesus Christ. Again, we find this exclusivity of the Bible. There's only one way. And I didn't say this. God did. So when a Muslim gets mad because I say Jesus is the only way, it's not my saying it, God said it. When a Hindu says that, a Buddhist, any world religion, I'm not saying it. All I'm doing is telling you what God said. It's clear right there. Now if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, Next slide here. Each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it. Uh, uh, oops. For the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. Now, if you look on the background there, you can see a guy working at a furnace. He's at a foundry. That's molten metal. That furnace is probably about 2,500 degrees there. I don't know about you guys, but the wood, hay, straw part of the, the building process, how's that going to hold up in a blast furnace? Probably not real good. Going to kind of go, and go. And Paul is saying when you and I base our lives on anything other than Jesus Christ and serving Him the way that He commands us to serve Him, that's what our life is, wood, hay, straw. It's a waste. Because if you and I know that something is going to be tested by fire, we're going to build it differently. It's like exhaust systems on cars. They don't build them out of aluminum. If you're British, they don't build them out of aluminum. Uh, because, sorry, the British car show I love so much, they always say it wrong. I don't know how they screwed up our language so badly. But anyhow, um, you don't build. Yes, we did. I'm saying that sarcastically. You don't build an exhaust system out of aluminum because you know the exhaust gas is too hot; it will melt the exhaust system. And here, Paul is saying, don't build your life out of worthless garbage because it's not going to stand the most important test of all, and that's when you and I stand before Jesus Christ. Because if we know that our life has to pass through the fire of God's judgment. better build it right. Because you can put gold in a furnace and it still comes out gold. In fact, it comes out pure gold. It helps to burn off the impurities. If you put silver in a furnace, it comes out pure. More pure than when it went in. Yeah, that's how you purify silver and gold. Now it goes on and says, if any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. Now you start with the foundation of Jesus Christ. You build on another foundation, you're just lost. There's no hope for anything at that point. But then you and I are supposed to take that foundation of Jesus Christ and we're supposed to beg other people. We're supposed to live our lives as an example in front of other people. We're supposed to bend over backwards to reach other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to love other people. We're supposed to love each other in this room. Jesus said, you'll know they're my disciples by that love that they have for one another. Disciple is just a term that means follower. And if we sort of 
love people because of what we can get from them, it doesn't count. That's like wood, hay, and stubble. If we serve other people, even at church, you can serve other people at church and do it for the wrong reason. You could maybe sing on the worship team because, well, people think I'm great then. Oh, they love my voice. Oh. No, that would be the wrong reason. That would be a wood, hay, or stubble reason. If it's anything other than Jesus commands that we serve Him their whole life, it's wood or hay or stubble. It's a building that's not going to stand up under fire. And that's why to somebody that really loves Jesus, they don't care if they run the sound system in the back or if they sing on the stage because they're serving Jesus. They don't care if they get the credit for starting that new program at church that's helping to reach people or if nobody knows it was their idea. Because it's about Him. It's serving Him and not about me. And not about what I want. Or what I can do. Now it goes on, it says, if any man's work is burned up, notice he's still got a foundation of Jesus Christ. So, at a bare minimum, you have to believe in Jesus. Or you won't be at the Bema Seat. This is only, the Bema Seat is only for Christians, for God to judge how they lived their life after they got saved. But if any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. In other words, again, this is a metaphor for building. You start with Jesus as the foundation. Any other foundation doesn't work at all. And then you and I, what we do to serve Jesus is then tested by fire. If it's of high quality, if it's done with pure motives, if it's done God's way, then it will last. Then it will survive the fire. Then, in fact, the fire will make it even better. But if it's done out of selfishness, if it's done so that we could get the attaboy or the praise of men or be looked up to or any other reason, we will be lost. And here's one other thing implicit in the story but not necessarily said is you and I, every one of us should be intentionally serving God. Should be intentionally reaching out to the lost people around us. Because there's some people that are going to show up in heaven and all they got is a foundation. They got nothing to show. They didn't even build the wood hay and stubble. Just stayed home and played video games their whole life or were selfish or kept their faith to themselves and didn't tell others about it. God wants us, God even commands us to serve Him. I don't want to suffer loss on the day that I have to stand before the Bema Seat of Jesus Christ. I don't want all that I've done in this life to be burned up, and I don't want all that you are going to do in your life. Because see, guys, what this means is the job that you have one day is much less important than how you serve God and live for Him. So many teenagers, especially the later you get in high school, spend more time worrying about their career than they do about living for the Lord. Than they do even asking God, what do you want me to do with my life? God, what do you have for me? Don't waste my life. So we're to live each day knowing that no one escapes standing before God and being judged by God. Each day, guys. You and I are going to have to give an account one day. And like, I'm all excited about the rapture. Woohoo! Get to go home. Get to be with Jesus. But then i got to stand... big test coming. And I would be foolish and it would be sad if I didn't warn you that there's a test coming at the end of this life. And it's a cumulative test over your whole life.
Imagine if they tested you at school every year over what you learned in second grade. You better hope you remember it. Well, imagine God's going to test you and me over our whole life, not by how much we remember, but how well we served Him. How well we honored Him before other people. It goes on here. Do you, not, do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man des destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. That is what I am. Each and every one of us is a temple. Somebody asked me tonight, well, what's the Bible say about tattoos? The Bible does say, do not mark your bodies, meaning mark or cut or tattoo your bodies as the heathen do. Because your body is not your body. But my body is not my body. And that's why, in God's eyes, when people say, oh, well, nobody's getting hurt, I can support it. Well, but God says, your body is a, as a Christian, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So no, you and I as Christians should not be smoking cigarettes, pot, drinking alcohol to excess, drinking alcohol at all until you're 21, because that would be illegal and breaking the law is against God's commands. You and I, our bodies, our physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So don't tear it up. Don't destroy it. Don't cut it up. Don't underfeed it. Don't overfeed it. Don't go without sleep. That's bad for your health. Don't sleep too much. That's also bad for your health and, and your uh, state of mind. This is not really ours. According to this, it's God's temple. The Holy Spirit lives within us as Christians. And God takes it pretty seriously. The whole destroy the temple of God, God will destroy him. Kind of a scary thing. So take care of it. Now, as some of you know, I do have a tattoo on my wrist. It is a cross. I got this when I was in Egypt. And actually, ironically, the, I just saw the town, the, the monastery that I got this at was, 13, was I believe, a 1300, no. It was founded in the 1300s. No, it was 1300 years old. The monastery where I got this tattoo in Egypt. Um, it probably wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done because Egyptian tattoos aren't necessarily all that clean. Um, so I could have gotten a disease from it. The only tattoo I would ever even consider getting is a cross because it's just there as a reminder every time I look at my wrist that Jesus died for me. But you won't ever find me with an I love mommy tattoo or an eagle or a dragon or anything else on any other part of my body. Just And part of the reason I did this, guys, is um, while I was there, Egyptian Christians, all of them get a tattoo similar to this. As a sign to everybody in their life that they're a Christian. And it's a Muslim country, about 10% of the people in Egypt are Christians. And so, I encourage you to pray for them. The monastery where I got this tattoo in the city of Asut, um, they were attacked. They, they had set up a fence to protect the monastery from rioters and stuff, and that, that fence got torn out by armed gunmen. They got chased off, but Christians are, are paying the price over there. So in addition to be careful how you treat your body, remember to pray for those around the world that are suffering. Because in the very city where I got this tattoo in 2005, Christians are being beat up with baseball bats, being killed. And those people, they're going to stand before God and He's going to say, well done. Because you didn't even love your own life more than you loved 